Welcome to the Scouts Eye. I'm Bobby Bell, joined as always by former Super Bowl winning NFL scout Brian Broaddus. Brian, the Cowboys had their first game of the season. The defensive line had all the headlines uh, with their pass rush, the way they were able to affect Daniel Jones and, and really get after the Giants. On the other side of the ball, we were concerned the Cowboys might run into some of those issues, that they would have trouble with, you know, Kayvon Thibodeau and Dexter Lawrence and, uh, you know, Leonard Williams and guys like that. But the offensive line in general held up, even with Tyler Smith missing and Tyron Smith being a little banged up. Let's talk quickly about Chumi Doga stepping in and playing left guard. How did you think he fared in this game? Yeah, Bobby, I'll tell you what, there was a big concern because of what the Giants could do inside. Uh, you know, with you mentioned with Lawrence and Leonard and those guys and how they could control the the middle of the uh, of that uh, offensive line for the Cowboys. Adoga did not look very good at the tackle spot during training camp. He got banged up. We didn't see him, but just a little bit playing guard. It looks like to me the Cowboys, knowing that, were able to put him at the guard, plug him in. Uh, wasn't perfect by any means, but they, it played right into his strengths. The Giants, with their power, they tried to bull rush. There wasn't a lot of quickness. There wasn't a lot of a space play. It was pretty much in, in line with how he played. And so good job with the power, good job with his sets, You know, a good job of making those uh, Giant defenders have to run over him in order to get to the ball. So a really nice job by him stepping in when there was a lot of concern about maybe him being a little bit of a liability in this game. Yeah, definitely. I think moving forward, it looks like guard is a a better fit for him with this particular football team than tackle because tackle was a real struggle for him during training camp. Like you mentioned, Uh, Tyron Smith was back at left tackle. He was dealing with an ankle issue. Um, You know, we've had questions about his health, obviously, but also just, you know, talking about a little bit of maybe he's had some declining play. Uh, Overall, what did you see from him in this game? I'll tell you what, uh, over 65 snaps of him playing in this game and, uh, you know, no pressures, no issues. I was worried about his ankle and with the ability with the lateral agility, the slide, uh, the ability to kick away from the line, you know, how he would be able to set up. Uh, he did a really nice job coming into this, the breakdown that you and I had, Ojolari, Thibodeau, those guys could potentially present uh, problems for him and, uh, he was uh, completely up to the task, uh, no major issues, no major breakdowns, technique looked good uh, all around. If you said just the way that he was able to run block, pass block, a uh, big win for Tyron Smith in this football game. And then the one area where I thought they may have struggled a little bit on the offensive line in this game, and there weren't a whole lot of opportunities, uh, you know, for for passes down the field so there weren't a long like sets where the offensive line had to pass protect or anything else but one guy who uh had some trouble times was tyler biotish i felt like obviously he's going up against a really really good defensive tackle in dexter lawrence um one handful of reps but for the most part he got a little bullied inside are you saying that's just a function of playing a great player like dexter lawrence or or do you have any concerns with biotish Yeah, you know, when you look at Biotish, and there's been so much improvement for him. And then even with uh, you guys visiting with Jerry Jones this morning on your show on Sean and RJ and Bobby's, uh, your guys' show, it was, I'll tell you what, he was talking about that they've put, they've taken stuff off Dak Prescott's plate. And so somebody's got to pick up the slack there. Who would that be? That would be Tyler Biotish. So not only did he have to make calls, checks, but he also had to deal with a, a monster inside in Dexter Lawrence. Lawrence was seven and a half sacks last year, m- pressures, tackles for loss, difficult guy to deal with. Caught him one time pretty bad where he was like a one-legged football player, didn't really have a good base, really couldn't stay in front you know, of Lawrence right there. And when you get a big old body like that that's moving forward with momentum and you're a one-legged football player, there's going to be some problems. So, Things taken off Dak's plate, putting on Biotish's plate. Think he handled everything mentally fine. Again, there's going to be those opportunities where uh, power players might get a little bit of the best of him. Hope it doesn't happen uh, a lot in games, but uh, you know, especially with the way this division is, with all the defensive tackles that the Cowboys are going to have to face with the Commanders and the Eagles as well. So, uh, but overall, the offensive line, you know, keeping Dak Prescott intact. I think was a really, really good day for them. 
You can catch Brian brought us on the Dallas Cowboys radio network, the pre and post game show. You can also catch him on one Oh five through the fan two to 7 PM central Monday through Friday on the G bag nation. And you can also catch him on our podcast, the love of the star, Brian, thank you so much. We appreciate you, man. Thank you, Bobby. 